Steve, we're at the FQXI conference uh, dealing with the nature of observation and the importance of events and quantum mechanics and general relativity. Uh, what, what is some of the thinking that you're bringing to this understanding uh, about how we look at observation in the two most fundamental uh, theories of uh, modern physics? Well, so we have a pretty good theory of observation, say, in the context of just quantum mechanics. And uh, one way of thinking about it is, uh, uh, well, we want to describe everything in terms of evolution of the quantum wave function. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we need some additional structure to actually describe observation. We need to take, for example, a system, the universe, and divide it into subsystems. For example, an observer subsystem and an observee subsystem. Mm -hmm. And then we can describe quantum mechanical evolution that correlates the two, relates the two, and, and ultimately get at the notion of an observation or you know, something approximating an event, uh, although you know, really the usual notion of event is only an approximation. Uh, one of the interesting things, and this actually does tie to black hole physics, uh, is that when you also include gravity, there are some additional subtleties even beyond quantum mechanics in uh, describing observation uh, in terms of, say, this interaction between subsystems. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when you take into account basic things we know about gravity, uh, it turns out that there's a real challenge in properly defining a division of the universe into uh, these subsystems corresponding mm. to observer and observee. Mm. Uh, and this may be getting at some of the most basic uh, puzzling aspects of the reconciliation of quantum mechanics with gravity and, and it gets at questions of how to even think about locality in gravity, in quantum gravity. Yeah, well, well, what's an example of where the uh, tension between gravity and quantum mechanics is, is, the, is the most extreme? Uh, well, so we see this most uh, emphatically in the context of strong gravitational fields, like in black holes, but we can start to see it even with weak gravitational fields. Mm. Uh, so just to explain a little bit more, uh, if you combine quantum mechanics with the principles of special relativity and the principle of locality, we get our most basic framework for describing uh, everything but gravity, which is uh, you know, the framework of local quantum field theory. Mm -hmm. That describes dark matter, it describes uh, elementary particles at the LHC, it describes you know, mm -hmm. basically everything we know except gravity. Um, and in local quantum field theory, uh, we have a notion of how to break things up into these subsystems. And it's related to uh, sort of quantum operators, and the most basic quantum operator, say, does something like create a particle, create an electron, for example. Uh, and we can independently sort of create an electron over here or over here. Uh, in gravity, however, you have to include the gravitational field of the electron, and that's something that extends to infinity. Mm. And so that actually gets in the way of cleanly defining a notion of independent creation of an electron here and an electron here are other kinds of particles. And you know, actually, that is how we think of the very notion of uh, locality in local quantum field theory is uh, through this ability to independently create things. And so gravity is standing in the way of uh, the familiar kind of definition of locality we have in all of the rest mm. of physics. So what's the implication of that? Well, that's a very good question. But one of the things we're struggling with is uh, the problem of black holes. And there we have indications that we need something like a modification to the familiar story of locality to get out of the paradoxes associated with black holes. Mm. Uh, and locality seems to be so fundamental to our understanding of how the world works. Yeah, it's really one of the basic postulates of uh, local quantum field theory, or basic principles underlying it. It's a bedrock principle for a description of everything but gravity. Uh, but when you include gravity, we don't even know how to properly formulate it, and that's one of the things we're discovering. And in that process, uh, 
what are the even options? I mean, how do you how do you violate locality and still be a physical system? Yeah, no, this is a very good question. Uh, you know, how do we get out sensible physics? Uh, but you know, gravity really is telling us that the usual principle of locality, at, at least as we've always formulated it, can't be formulated. Uh, so perhaps there's a modified way of uh, formulating that or, or an underlying principle that's similar to that. So either you have to violate quantum mechanics in some way or mm -hmm. violate locality. Gravity is forcing you to do one way or the other and mm -hmm. you choose not to violate quantum mechanics in which case you have no choice but to violate locality. Is that right? Yeah, well, so I'm thinking of this whole discussion, yes, in, the term, in terms of the basic principles of quantum mechanics, at least uh, broadly enough construed. Uh, and so, so that's going to be a basic assumption, but then there's a question of you know, how do we formulate locality? And we have a sharp notion of how to do that in quantum field theory, but put in gravity and you know, everything sort of goes out the window. And that's one of the big questions uh, today.